Hello everyone and in this video we're going to look at um, an equation that will uh, indicate the thrust produced by a static propeller. So normally uh, when we have a propeller on an engine um, we would say that you know the engine is producing so much power this is P here and uh, the, prop the prop then is, is uh, producing some thrust so the work done then is the thrust times the velocity of the aircraft so if we divide the work um, out divided by the work in we get the efficiency of the propeller uh, now normally we would um, assume an efficiency of about 85 um, percent for uh, for an aircraft in flight so if we have the power produced by the uh, propeller and we have the velocity of the aircraft if we assume a value of 85 percent we can normally calculate or estimate the thrust produced by the by the propeller but that's when it's in flight but you know when the aircraft is not moving when this v is zero uh, it becomes more difficult so we're going to look at um the um fruit momentum and we looked at this in a in a earlier video and that theory is based on air air coming in uh, being accelerated through the propeller uh, and going out in, into the slipstream at a, at a faster velocity so the velocity the free stream velocity v that would be the velocity of the aircraft here in this case the velocity of the air going through the disc is uh, v0 and the velocity of the free stream uh, air is a vs so uh, when we looked at this fruit momentum, we saw that um, this velocity of the air going through the disc here was the average of the free stream velocity plus the um, uh, slipstream velocity. Okay, so we're going to use that uh, or adapt the, this equation uh, for, for this example. So uh, in our uh, estimate here so if the aircraft is static you know then you know this there'd be no air coming in so we'd say v is, is not and therefore we'd say that v naught is equal to vs over 2 which uh, when we transpose that we say that the slipstream velocity is two times uh, v naught now the thrust produced by a, a propeller is the mass times acceleration and the uh, acceleration is the change in velocity with time so that's uh, the slipstream velocity here vs minus uh, the free stream velocity v and the time factor comes from this so this is the mass flow so this is kilograms per second um, so that's where you know the the time factor comes in in here now the mass flow uh, from the continuity equation so the mass of air going through this disk here is the density times the area of the disk times the velocity of the air going through the disk so i'm going to substitute that back into that equation instead of vs we're going to use 2v naught and v here is just zero so we have an equation here for uh, for the thrust which is 2 rho s v naught squared now if i looked at the uh, air here at this point here v it would have uh, no kinetic energy and if we looked at the air, air here uh, in the slipstream it has some kinetic energy it'll be half m v s squared so where did the um, air get this extra energy so it, it got it from uh, the propeller and 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 from the engine okay so if we're assuming you know all this power is is from the engine is being given to the to the air we'd say that the power is equal to half m v s squared now I, i've mixed up energy and, and power there but en energy energy is in joules power is joules per second and don't forget that this mass flow here is uh kilograms per second so that's where we, we you know we're mixing up this this joules and power because it's it's kilograms per second and we already saw that the, that the mass flow is rho s v naught and we already saw that v s over here is equal to 2 v naught so if i plug those values back into the equation here v s is 2 v naught so that's squared and instead of m we're going to use rho s v naught so that becomes 2 rho s v naught cubed 
And if I transpose that, I get an expression for V0. So we have an expression for V0 here, and we have the thrust over here that uses V0. So we'll use the two of them together. <clears throat> so I substitute in for V0. So instead of V0, I'm going to use the power divided by 2 rho s to the power of 1 third. And that V0 is squared, so that will be squared here. OK, so uh, that is the equation. Um, but you know we get some 2 rho s here, and we've 2 rho s to the power of 2 thirds here. So uh, we can say then that the equation just becomes uh, power, the engine power to the 2 thirds times 1 third root of 2 rho s, or uh, a nicer way to express it as saying the static thrust then is the uh, third root of um, 2 rho s, the engine power squared. Now, that would assume that all the power from the engine is transferred to the air, um, in assuming 100% efficiency, but you know that's not going to happen. There will be some um, inefficiency, so we would have to uh, multiply that by some factor, uh, Anita. Uh, the problem is, um, uh, what is that? What is that value? So um, it, it'll probably vary, or sorry, not probably, it will vary from application to an application. But there is a, um, I have another video on YouTube, and I'll put the link uh, in the comments section down below. And in that uh, video, the, um, the user shows uh, an electric um, motor driving a propeller, and they're able to calculate, or measure the power being um, delivered and the, the thrust that was being uh, uh, produced and they uh, they uh, w um, produce some graphs so using the the formula I have here I have calculated uh, some thrust values and I I had to play around with the with the efficiency figure um, uh, 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 for a bit, but uh, I eventually settled with a value of, of 0 0.3 or 30% uh, efficient. And just for these three values, you can see, um, you know, the, the calculated thrust was 2.07. If I use an efficiency figure of 30%, I, sorry, the calculated thrust was 6.05 newtons. It's a small propeller. Uh, the record was 2.07. So if I multiplied the 6.05 by 0.3, I was getting 1. Um, 81. Okay, so it was 1.8 compared to 2.07. Uh, here we have 6.08 as opposed to 6.16, and here we have 7.55 as opposed to 8.54. So it's reasonably close. Um, and if I plotted those on a graph, you know, it's it's reasonably close. Okay, so. Um, uh, I'm going to finish uh, on this and saying that the static thrust uh, of a propeller is, I've estimated to be 0.3 times 2 rho s, the power of the engine squared, and that's all to the third root. Uh, I'd be very interested to see if any of those uh, uh, remote controlled aircraft users out there, if they uh, uh, have anything to say about that or if they have any uh, readings or uh, values that would support this or are in fact um, contradict this. Bye.